Welcome. 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 Welcome to Studio C. This is going to be your kid's favorite episode. I have a lot of friends that work in the entertainment business and a friend of mine called me and said, I'm working on this documentary called The Laughter Life about a family-friendly sketch comedy group called Studio C. Started watching it and I said, these guys are amazing. Then I clicked around a little bit and found out that Studio C is in fact the group behind the famous YouTube sketch last year where Matt Meese, who plays Scott Sterling, gets the ball smashed off of his face repeatedly. <laughs> we did some sniffing around and found out that Studio C is based at a BYU TV in Provo, Utah. And I went to interview them. It was an incredible experience and I gained major cool dad points. So sit down with your kids and enjoy this great conversation with Studio C. Hey guys. Hey. 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 Um, where's the girls? They have crazy lives right now and so they're all over the place. But they... Tell them we miss them. So, uh, Saturday Night Live wishes it was Studio C. <laughs> That's what we hear. That's what we hear. Yes, I think that should be your, your slogan. <laughs> okay, so I want to go through everybody. I'd like to get name, where you're from, and comfort food. Ooh. Mm. Go. Yo, you chose the right person. Yes. That's right. <laughs> Stacey Hart can be a Dallas, Texas, mac and cheese. <laughs> All day. I'm Jeremy Warner. I'm from Blackfoot, Idaho. I, I eat a lot of hamburgers. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Steven? Steven Meek, Kelly, Texas. Tris Leches. That's my mm. oh, that's, cool. I love Ooh, that stuff. Okay. Jason Gray, Boise, Idaho, pepperoni pizza. There you go. Okay. Classic all American. Adam. Adam Berg, Highland, Utah, and pretty much just carbs of <laughs> all varieties. <laughs> <laughs> James? Um, James Perry, Sacramento, California, and uh, whipped cream. Just mm -hmm. straight whipped cream. Yeah. <laughs> All right, Matt Meese, Phoenix, Arizona. I'm gonna say chimichangas. Mm. <laughs> uh, Frozen chimichangas. <laughs> that you might wow, this is a really healthy crowd. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are seven seasons in, about to be eight seasons in, and now there's this documentary coming out about you. Is that sort of surreal? It's like kind of surreal because no one expect, at least I didn't expect it to be, to get to this magnitude. And so to have getting attention from people that are outside of this world we're in is kind of crazy, I think. Very surreal. It's very exciting though. It, we, we always wanted, you know, we thought like if people knew this existed, we thought, oh, they'd probably enjoy watching it, especially families. That was always the goal. Yeah, mm -hmm. right. Matt told Conan that you guys are filling a niche. There's a lot of things that like little kids can watch and a lot of things that their parents can watch. Right. But to be like, hey guys, it's seven o'clock, let's watch something together that we'll all find entertaining. I think that's a very, uh, I think Hollywood in particular isn't serving that market. And I think it really is like a, a big market. That Having done stand up before, it's super hard to be clean. It's easy to get raunchy, That anybody can do that. Steven, you and I have talked about this. You guys really wrestle with that. I'm thinking of the, the skit with Moses and just, this is not easy, like even you guys being, who you are, you kind of got to go, is this across the line? Is this not across the line, right? Well, I think it's hard because it's like something that might uh, not offend us might offend my grandma. And so it's like some people are just going to be offended no matter what you do. But at the same time, like the first test is the writer's room. If we, if someone in right the here. room doesn't feel yeah. comfortable, yeah, right here. If someone in the room doesn't feel comfortable, then, then we address it and we figure out how to make it feel good. So in your process, there's kind of like a veto, like you guys all have an agreement, like, if, if Jeremy says, I'm super uncomfortable with that because yeah. they're making fun of well, mustached that that, people. You know, we yeah. never do that. <laughs> <laughs> I know some people that are negative and they can't see anything good in anything. You guys, I'm right here. <laughs> Jeremy, I don't think she was referring to you. Oh, how could she not be? You guys know how much I hate sandwiches and love being negative. <laughs> I didn't know you hated sandwiches. Why do you think I'm eating soup, Steven? It's like 100 degrees outside. <laughs> I, I abuse people on airplanes, and one of the things that I do Excuse is... Me? <laughs> yes, You have to explain. I'm repenting. I'm in a repentance process. But one of the things I'll do is I'll go through this process. Do you know who Studio C is? If they say yes, they know like lots of stuff. Uh -huh. um, if they say no, I go, oh, Scott Sterling. Not sure what Scott Sterling is. Skit with a guy, the soccer ball getting bounced off his face, right? And then they're like, oh, like nobody said no. Mm -hmm. But let me ask you guys this. Tell me a sketch that you guys really love that you feel like it's been overlooked and people should give it another shot. Oh man, everything this I've ever done. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
I think the crown song. Oh. But that one's getting the tail. Well, well, I mean, but it should have more. Oh. I'm Wait, saying. which one? Which one is that? Well, Adam wrote it, so he should. Oh, he's, the crown song gets ruined, where we all dress up as crayons. Okay. Because we're adults. Yes. And that's what we do for a living. <laughs> yes. <laughs> We've done a lot of like TV show parodies, like Walking Dead and Breaking Bad. And considering like Walking Dead is like, what, the number one show on cable or whatever, I don't know why. <laughs> but. <laughs> Uh, I, I feel like there's such an audience for that and we're like serving that audience and they eat it up They just need to see it. Yeah, okay. That's that's actually a good point um, Jeremy is there a skit that took off that you didn't think would take off Don't say all of them. I know that's what's <laughs> on the tip of your tongue uh, The truth of running one. Oh, I didn't realize people yeah. were way into running <laughs> <laughs> And yes, it is like a thing. Well, I mean, he like, was eating a hamburger and yeah, stuff. Why yeah, are people was, so into this? Like, <laughs> I don't understand this, but I mean, it was getting shared on like uh, running like message boards and yeah. stuff, and it was just like, oh wow, it's a, it's an interesting uh, <coughs> niche. I always yeah. say niche, but I guess I'm <laughs> stupid. Yeah, right. Today yeah, we're I'm using niche. niche. Yeah. You said niche on on Conan. Ooh. I, there's no physical evidence of that. <laughs> <laughs> Look it up. Uh, like, but we're yeah. not going to show the clip and prove that you did no, that. Yeah. No, yeah. No, don't do all. that. Niche. And then Scott Sterling was like, oh, wow. Yeah, that surprised all of us. That surprised us. Really? Yeah. yeah. Like, we were focusing on the Hunger Games right. sketches that we right, did. Right, right. And then all of a sudden, overnight, Scott Sterling was like, the numbers were like peaking, and we're like, what's Malaysia so into this for? And then all of a sudden, it's like across the world internationally, it's exploding. And That's stuff, amazing. So. And at the time, we didn't have any videos over a million views. So we're like trying to get to that. You know, yeah, I think Scott threshold. took care of that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we managed. Okay, somehow. lightning round. <laughs> Comedic inspiration. Don't uh, think about it, Steve nice. Martin. Bill Murray. Douglas Adams. Will Ferrell. John Cleese. Uh, the Mighty Boosh. <laughs> Matt TV. Anything Matt on TV. it. Matt TV. Yeah, I know. It's like, hey, we got some good <laughs> people on there. It. Angela Johnson. Well, Bill she's started not on there, there anymore, but yeah. Um, this question is from my kids. Okay. What is the hardest part about acting in a sketch comedy show? Being funny. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's a good point, though, because yeah. there is this aspect of you don't really know what's funny until your audience tells you. Yeah, <laughs> we always have dress rehearsal audiences that like they love certain things, so we're like, oh, great, that's great, and then our actual audience is like, mm, we're not doing it for us. I've seen that. <laughs> the, the only thing I can liken it to in my in my personal life, of course, is I love to tell jokes, right? And as you know, when you tell a joke, there's that moment where you're watching. <laughs> to see, are other people yeah. laughing? Yeah. Yeah. And I've actually caught myself <laughs> laughing just to help people out. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, because I know how awkward it is to tell a joke and people are like, uh, yeah. I think being fresh, uh, because we like have to come up with something that's gonna feel new mm -hmm. to our audience and new to us so that we have fun with it. Where does it come from? Inspiration? Yeah. <laughs> Life. My dad emails Random me every thoughts. day. <laughs> <laughs> Does he really? I'm watching and yeah. watching finally, interesting people. Yeah, I mean, I think that's one reason that your sketches resonate with people is because they do come from life, and so people can sort of put themselves in that situation and go, "Oh yes, you know, somebody just brought up politics at the Thanksgiving dinner table." You right. haven't done that one, have you? Not yet. I want to cut. <laughs> <laughs> I want to cut. <laughs> drop it, drop but you know what I mean? <laughs> when, you're, when you're putting your sketches together, is there a moment where you all go, yeah, 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 that's going to be it? Sometimes. And yeah. then sometimes we are proven <laughs> wrong. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Usually if we th are really confident about it, it, it does not go great. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So don't trust your instinct. I think this is a super important question. Nervous. Why do kids love the show so much? Oh my goodness. So much. Part of the reason that kids love it, I think we have fun energy on stage. I think it's, even if kids aren't getting it, I think they really are drawn to like the energy we have. And they're allowed to watch it. <laughs> yeah. A lot, yeah, mo most watch. of the comedy that's provided, like their parents won't let them do it's what they like can. It's like watching to a PG-13 movie. Have fun <laughs> yeah. 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 Simple answer, you know they have no other option. Carolina finally pushed one through Stoney. Brown started Did you see that? Here comes the spike straight to the man. The man. The legend. His teammates help him to his feet. No. They raise him Evan Wood. Great wall of Stalin. Okay, so we're talking about family. You guys are a family as well. I mean, do you, do you feel that way? For sure. Oh yeah. 
I mean, I do. I don't want to speak for everyone. <laughs> Eight, nine years that we've known each other, and so that's like more than I knew most of my like really close friends growing up. Yeah. It's like to be together for that long and to still be friends and colleagues. Like a lot of times when you mix that many things, like something could go wrong. You know, bands break up, actors, <laughs> you know, can't work with each other. But for some reason, like I feel like our friendships have just gotten stronger and stuff. You guys hang out outside yeah. of the show, which I'm sort of like, wow, they can't really get enough of each other. <laughs> I mean, These guys is that, live together. That yeah. is, it's me, Funko, yeah, tell, and Matt. Yeah, tell me a little bit more about, about that. It's Hanging the out worst the show. thing I don't know. I've ever done. I hate. Yeah. It's <laughs> super fun. I like, like it, yeah. I don't know. I'm legitimately jealous whenever I go to their house and I'm like, man, why'd I get married? I try, I try to get to the <laughs> Every time he comes, I'm like, don't leave. leave. It's, like, it's like this fun game I have where I just want to be like hospitality king and make them stay at the house forever. Seriously though, we, like Jason was saying, we spend so much time together and we really love each other. And I think part of that is how we chose and put this group together. It was very selective. Steven, can you tell me just a little bit of the backstory just for people that don't know? How the group came together because... We all started in Divine Comedy on yeah. BYU campus. So that was a sketch group that in the number one criteria really was how easy people are to work with. There's lots of talented people. Like I am, I count myself one of the least talented people Me in too. the world. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> but, but I mean, the reality is just like being nice and like, and taking care of each other. I feel like that has actually driven a lot of the success of Studio Safe. But how many people were in the class? It's about like a hundred or so people audition every year for Divine Comedy and then, you know, a couple get chosen for it and that's, so we kind of like chose each other. Natalie and I got in uh, in 2007 and then uh, uh, Whitney and Jeremy. Whitney and Jeremy got in the next year and then it was Jason and Mal the next year and then and Adam and James the next year, and then Stephen and Stacy the next year. Two by two, like Noah's Ark. Wait a minute, yeah. I was going to say so. As a theological joke, you could say you are twice chosen. <laughs> uh, or yes. like Noah's Ark. The group came out of, was born out of friendship, right? It was born out of friendship, and now it's born out of. You think this is fair? Um, just a shared, not only a friendship, but a shared passion for what you're doing. You guys wake up every day and you love what you're doing. Yes or no? Jason? Yeah. yeah. I mean, this is the dream Jay. job. I never thought I'd be able to have a job with friends, not only that, but like... Or just a job. Or just a job. <laughs> or just a job. Yes. I never thought I would, would have a job. <laughs> <laughs> I studied engineering, and so I was an engineer for a while while this was kind of getting started, and it was part-time, and then once they were able to take us on and, and make it like our full-time job, I... I was immediately like jumping on it and happy to come and do sketch comedy. Jason, you were gonna yeah. be a dentist? Dentist, yes. Which, okay. Matt, you were gonna be a... Nothing. I, <laughs> I, I, I wanted to work at the zoo. That was my dream. <laughs> it still is. I was like, we gotta give Matt credit though, because Matt is like, this is almost like his vision. It, it was nothing that none of us hadn't talked about before. We always said like, oh, it'd be great to get paid to do sketch comedy, because we were doing it for free, you know, in our extra time. Um, but we didn't think that would ever be really possible until BYU TV was looking for new content. They were willing to take a take a risk with us because we were very new for them. And, uh, and I was like, yeah, well, these are the people I want to work with, so so let's bring them in. And and people took real risks. I mean, I, I, what we were paying that first season, there was no reason to think, yeah, I should quit my job and do this full time. What do you think is the impact that you guys are having on families? It's mostly negative. <laughs> <laughs> Just They're being destroyed <laughs> across the land. <laughs> no, we had, um, for example, we J James and Stacy and I did a show in Elko, Nevada, a couple of weeks ago. And this girl, while we were we were signing um, with Natalie, with Natalie, she's, she's not here, too. but yeah. so she's we were signing autographs. Us, yeah. And this ten-year-old girl came up to us, and she just said it so like it was so sincere and so pure. She said, "You guys are my heroes," and like she had like, and then she started to cry, and then I started to like cry, and like I was like, I feel like Batman or something because it's like very yes. flattering and, and nothing that it's something I never expected. When we first started, the, the, there was a lot of conversation of let's let's make something that is. Uh, something that the family can watch together. So it'd be this shared experience. They could be quoting it years from now and whatnot. And we see like every Halloween, especially around this area, um, like families will dress up as our characters from the sketches, like the whole family, you know, mom, dad, wow. and all the kids. <laughs> and, and it's awesome because you know they're watching it together. This is something that has been a bonding experience. We've gotten so many letters and just emails from s kids that are 
have some like serious illnesses or families that are struggling with some very serious things and they always reach out and say your show keeps me going or your show is what keeps me smiling when there's no reason to smile and that man that just like yeah, yeah. gets me to think because I, I think we've all that thought too it's like are we even like doing anything important like we want to there's the world needs help we want to change it and then we have these moments where we're like oh but we're just writing goofy sketches and then we get these letters that really kind of redeem the value of at least to me yeah. of what we're doing it's like yeah we're making a difference we're doing big things yeah. I've been thinking about that a lot lately that like I tried to figure out what what's my purpose in life and all this stuff and got into engineering because I thought okay I'm good at math and science and I can maybe create something that will help right, the world right, right. and then I got this opportunity to just goof off and do something I thought was really fun but since I loved it I put my heart into it and I did it well and I think if you do anything well and you can put your heart into something it will bless the That's lives great. of other people. That's Ooh. great. No, that is great. And actually, <laughs> Jeremy, I'd like, like to ask, <laughs> thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I'd like to follow up on that. Like, as a dad, what advice would you give to kids that are watching about that idea of following sort of the God-given passions that you've been given? Do something because you want to be good. Do something because you want to, you know, make a difference in the world. I don't know. If you love it then you'll do it when it's hard. So, yeah. Because it'll yeah, yeah, always yeah, yeah. be hard. Oh, that's yeah. a good point. You know what I'm saying? You got to practice and practice when it's hard and when you don't feel like doing it. But if deep down you like know there's purpose in it, then you'll keep doing it. <laughs> don't, yes. neg don't neglect yes. your relationships and all that other like stuff. Like your family. Yeah. <laughs> they miss you, man. <laughs> I know. I, that wasn't a dig at you. Oh, I'm in so much trouble right now. That, that My wife's going to be like, uh-huh, you tell Stephen high five him. Well, Steve, <laughs> Steve is the one who said he didn't want to be married anymore and live with these guys. So he can't really talk. He had to balance it out. <laughs> like he just, you know, he just took a, a withdrawal from the love bank and just made a big old deposit. Yeah. And Witt's like, that's right. Yeah. So the, the ladies aren't here. I really do think they've made a huge contribution. And I'd love all of you just really quickly to talk about their contribution to the show. They really are very, very gifted and probably in a lot of ways that you, you haven't even seen yet. You know, because um, there are cer certain restrictions I think that are placed on women that men don't have, particularly with comedy, um, and we're we're trying to push that more and more. Well, I mean, I agree with all that. Like, we have an amazing group of girls, and we wish there were more. Like, we want to encourage like women get into comedy, and like, you know, and it's, I think it's a big push even into the industry worldwide, and we love that. We couldn't do a show without them, but they could probably do a show without <laughs> us. Because <laughs> like even Whitney, um, we did a Count of Monte Cristo sketch and she played a man on it. And I was like, she does a better man than I do. Like, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I think women, especially girls, need more examples of, of strong women, especially in comedy, where it's a very male dominated field. And I think our women carry that torch like brilliantly. I know just being able to play characters that aren't just respected because their bodies or how cute they are or something like funny solid characters I think so it does a lot for like our culture and for, for girls everywhere. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah, we're doing this. There's a huge, tr often overlooked tradition in scripture about laughing, not just Isaac's name, but if you think about the scene where the prophets of Baal are building their altar and Elijah's making fun, and when he, and he's not just poking fun, he, he might not even be family friendly in his humor, <laughs> right? Because he's like, hey, maybe your God's out using the bathroom. I mean, read, yeah. read it, it's in there. And then he kills them, <laughs> yeah, yeah, so, yeah, 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 really. <laughs> which, which to me is just the beginning of a long, proud Jewish tradition, but that's a whole other <laughs> That's all, I believe that a, a lot, you know, Mel Brooks is probably a direct descendant of Elijah. But, but that aside, faith, comedy, pe those are two things that people don't think of together. And they also don't think that, candidly, that faithful people can be funny, right? Because the Hollywood image of all of us is uptight, judgmental. No, I think that's fair. I think like in, in any culture, it's easy for people to judge people and it's easy for people to get uptight about, you know, aspects that are really important to them and, and stuff like that. And so I, I do understand that and appreciate that anywhere. but. Uh, for us, I think like we're all of a similar mindset where it's like let's let's take the things that are serious seriously, and the things that aren't serious, let's not take them seriously. Right? Would you say it's fair that you guys are dispelling a stereotype? Absolutely. And I, I think part of the show is this desire to create something that is funny, not because we're people of faith, 
but just because it is funny. And then hopefully, you know, people learn more about us and find out that, uh, yeah, we do believe in God and poke fun at the things that are worth poking fun at. But at the end of the day, underneath this, what's driving you? What's that it, in terms of your faith? I guess it's hard because sometimes I play villains and things that I, I wouldn't do <laughs> uh, off camera. But I, I think it's that consistency that I want to make sure that my values are things that um, I try to teach, you know, to my children, um, that my parents have taught me, um, that I'm consistent with that with my comedy and my acting so that the two are never like in battle with each other. And the fact that we get to do that I think is pretty amazing because I don't think most actors and writers and comedians have that luxury. Stacy, can you tell me a, just something, a moment that you guys had where your faith as a cast brought you guys through it? Like it helps to remember like what it's all about. We believe that this is this is temporary, this right. stuff, this isn't gonna last. But there are, there are elements about what we're building and developing here that will. Relationships, um, helping people, those things are, those things are things that'll last beyond us. Knowing, knowing that this is temporary, but knowing that you know people in your lifetime are gonna and hopefully beyond are gonna remember this, what do you, what do you want the legacy to be? Um, I want it to be that um, we made content that was worth watching. We did, you know, we worked hard to make something that we could be proud of. And so it's taught me to be like, if you're gonna be really good at what you do and really care about what you do, you have to know what's around you and, and respect the good that's around you. And then take all those good things and p apply them and leave, leave the things that you think aren't of value. Yeah. And use that to, to make something that'll be helpful to people. Mm -hmm. What about being a faithful person sort of gives you a different lens on comedy? I definitely think our faith more informs our comedy rather yeah. than like directs it. Yeah. We have a lot of faith-based experiences. Yeah. We're being true to ourselves and I think that shows a lot of unique um, content. If you can share with me sort of a value, a virtue that you have that, you're, that you've been given by your faith that's really what, something that drives you, the first thing that comes to your mind, Scott Sterling. Uh, optimism. Optimism. I love that. Being genuine. I have no virtue. <laughs> <laughs> Humility. <laughs> That's a huge virtue. Uh, perseverance. Mm. Charity. Uh, I just, I hope that I'm a good father. Mm. I don't know the word for this, but it's, maybe it's close to optimism. It's like finding joy in all the moments, be they good or bad, would have been Yeah, that is great. Yeah. Guys, I cannot thank you enough. It was just so fun to hang out with you guys. Thank so you. Thanks, thanks, man. We really did it. Yeah. This is gonna be fun, because this is what's inside, what's inside. We're just cutting things open and destroying things, but we're having lots of fun doing it. What do you guys do with all the stuff that you cut in half? We keep most of the stuff that we can. Do you want to see some of it? Do fish have scales? <laughs> no, not some. <laughs>